What's up guys, Omni here. You guys know how it goes, another day, another video. Last night I tweeted I sleep. What news, topics, tweets, and videos y'all want me to talk about tomorrow? So guys, let me not waste your time. We're gonna get right into the video, but I'm gonna forewarn you. I'm gonna try to get through as many tweets as possible this video. So I'm gonna be shotgunning extremely fast. So if you don't pay attention, you might miss out on some of the answers. So without further ado, let's get started. Azul said people getting horny over a man inhaling oxygen corpse husband so yesterday guys if you didn't know corpse husband made a tweet about three seconds of him taking a very deep breath and uh, it has 336k likes let's go ahead and give it a listen that's it that's the uh that's the tweet. Kind of hot, not gonna lie. I'm waiting for somebody to take his breath and make a beat out of it or something crazy because the fandom that he has is absolutely insane. But I, I don't know. I feel like I could do something better. You know, let me let me go ahead and give it a shot. Let me give it a shot. <laughs> All right, let's try it. Let's try it. I'm gonna get really close for the mic for this one. Okay, prepare your eardrums. <sighs> now, let's see if we can get that trending to one million. What are your thoughts on Alpharad quitting YouTube? I'm referring to the end of the best of Alpharad 2020 and that he hasn't uploaded in a while. Guys. Guys, guys, I hate to break it to you, okay? <laughs> no YouTubers are quitting, okay? It is January. It is the worst ad revenue rates of all time, and it is the most popular month for all YouTubers to take breaks because you just don't make a lot of money here. I'm, I'm making videos right now. They're not they're they're not making anything, bro. This is like squat. Like compared to December, January is just <laughs> it's terrible, yo. So that's why everyone's taking a break and they will all be back. They tweeted, talk about how you made it this far, Omni. Uh, you deserve all the support you got and we're glad to see you grow as a content creator. <laughs> Oh wow, thank you. I mean, there's not much to say. Um, the, the channel's doing really well, and I'm still really nervous and scared because there's a lot of you who are showing up that I don't know you guys. So, I mean, if you're new to the channel, hey, what's up? Uh, but yeah, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little scared. I'm gonna keep doing my best. I genuinely appreciate all you guys' support. I'm just, I'm just kind of shocked and surprised because I'm not, I'm not trying. There was a point in time in YouTube where I would just try to entertain. I would try my hardest to make people laugh and stuff. And now I'm just kind of chilling and just vibing and just hoping that you guys are, you know, with that same energy and love when it's working. And it kind of scares me because I don't know. At this point if it doesn't work out then that just means people don't like me because <laughs> this is just is me so yeah thank you so much guys i i i'm really thankful my boy bear said anime biddies it's got 38 likes bear what are you doing bro i'm the one <laughs> I, it's just so uncharacteristic of seeing my boy bear say anime titties bro that's absolutely hilarious bear okay what's going on bro man let's talk let's talk you can't be taking my persona and he said okay but on a serious note the normalization of anime into mainstream is pretty phenomenal to be honest like this tiktok reminded me why i never got into anime when i was in high school fans were crap back in the 2000s well, that's a fact i remember when i was in school when i was watching anime that stuff was super unpopular especially for me like in a, a black school where there's predominantly black people like if you watched anime or if you listen to rock you were just a super nerd like there's something wrong with you bro anyway let's watch this tiktok that he's talking about konnichiwa hi i felt your anime pen on your backpack and i had to ask are you new here oh <gasps> sugoi well hi i'm rain wait i can't touch you just yet <laughs> just snarl what happened in volume 25 of my dragon Ania? what you haven't read the manga yeah <sighs> Have you ever read any manga? You're only watching anime? You're beneath me! How can I even talk to you? Yo, this guy's hella funny. Oh my god. This man just naturally snarled his head. I don't know. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if this is just my sense of humor, but when I see TikToks like this, those those fringe TikToks when the guys are like I love it. I, I think it's comedy. I think it's fun. I think it's humor. I mean, I'll let you guys know right now. I'm a weeb. I'm a super huge nerd. If you just look through my YouTube videos, you'll, you'll definitely see some crazy stuff out there, but you won't know in public. I'm one of those weebs that are like undercover. I'm an undercover weeb. Like you won't know right off the bat just by looking at me walking down the street. But yeah, I do know some people who are a little bit like this. They're like, oh my God, you haven't watched the manga. Wow. You must not really like anime. Wow. <laughs> I legit don't care how people act, okay? Let them be cringe, let them be whatever it is. As long as they're happy, I don't care. I love people like this who express themselves in a way that people might not like. I'm, I'm all about it. We've all done cringe stuff, okay? It's just whether or not people have discovered or not, okay? I'm pretty sure 99% of you guys watching this video right now used to go to Yahoo Chats or any chat and used to role play, okay? Actually, if you didn't role play as a kid in chat rooms, 
There might be something wrong with you. At Amarillo said, if you haven't, what about Trump's Twitter suspension? Trump got suspended from all social media everywhere, okay? I think he even got suspended from Shopify. <laughs> I don't even have a Shopify account. That's crazy. So yeah, some people were big baby rage mad about Trump, you know, being suspended from all the social media platforms, crying, you know, freedom of speech and all that stuff. To me, I personally don't really care. I feel like his uh, freedom of speech is what caused the whole riot to start in the first place with Capitol Hill. And yeah, five people died. And in my opinion, I feel like it could have been a lot worse, especially if they got their hands on certain Senate members. So uh, yeah, he can go sit on the bench with Leafy. Unfortunately, that's just how it is sometimes. Daruka Eon said, Rust drama in the offline TV server. In case you guys didn't know, there's some drama when it comes to the game Rust, which is basically like Minecraft, but for people who don't like blocks. And there was some drama because people were playing the game in a way that somebody doesn't want to play. And there were some people who were more purists and saying like, hey, you can only play the game in a certain way, yada, yada, yada. They included some members like XQC and uh, Critical and offline TV or whatever. People were getting big baby rage mad and some people were crying. I don't know. I don't care. I honestly do not care about the drama at that level, in my opinion. As long as my boy Saikuno is untouched and isn't being bullied by anyone, then I have no interest in this matter. Ellie tweeted, why do you go to sleep so early? So Ellie, I go to sleep early so that I can wake up early so I can make these videos because I am a very slow editor and if I didn't wake up early, then it would take me forever to make these videos. So <laughs> yeah, that's why I wake up early. At Kaitaro tweeted, what impact has Etika had on you? I think the impact that Etika had on me is the same impact that he had on a lot of people. He was just this funny, goofy dude that just brightened up everybody's day and he kind of made me feel like, hey, I kind of want to do the same for other people as well. His impact for me personally was like finding out the power of energy. I felt like <laughs> Etika's energy was extremely contagious and extremely just good to be around. And yeah, that's the kind of energy that I want to share with the rest of you guys. I don't want to share etiquette energy because no one can share etiquette energy, but I do want to share energy, good energy with you guys in the best way that I can. That's uh, that's the impact that he's had on me. Rest in peace, my boy. Love him always. Love him dearly. Jimbo tweeted, since there's a gif of Eevee, do you have a favorite Pokemon? If not one, do you have a top three? Yeah, I do have a favorite Pokemon and Eevee is my favorite Pokemon. I chose Eevee because they're incredibly cute, obviously. And I think the idea of being able to evolve into whatever you want is, it resonates with me. I, I really like Eevee. David Brown said whatever happens to your finance video ideas i get not talking about bitcoin since that's sort of why you stopped but what about other stuff it sounded like a really good idea so yeah i'm kind of spooked because when i started talking about bitcoin my channel undergo this like weird change metamorphosis where like all my videos everywhere just stopped and went to zero it almost looked like i got shadow banned and there were just bots spamming all my videos everywhere is absolutely terrible. So until I do a little bit more research on talking about money on YouTube and the implications it has on the channel, I'm not gonna get into it yet. It was just really scary <laughs> and I want no repeat performance of that. And Avery tweeted, Omni, is that you playing Melee in the background or is it random net play gameplay? I've always wanted to know. Yes, it's always me, okay? If you see a match on there and it's me winning, that's me. I'm the one that won because <laughs> I always win. I don't know why, but I get this question every single time I post one of these. I guess it's because I'm black, but just to give you guys an answer so you guys can finally stop asking. Let's just say I've never received any complaints. Uh, Ninja PID said, copying the last message I put in, Paul or app may be taken down entirely after being suspended from the Apple and Google stores as well as Amazon. And the link that he linked said, new, Amazon is booting Parler off AWS, its web hosting service, knocking the pro Trump social network offline until it finds a new host. So if you guys don't know, Parler is supposed to be like this replacement of Twitter, except for you can just say whatever the hell you want. There's supposed to be like no moderation. So yeah, a lot of people have been going to Parler and just basically been talking about whatever the hell they want. However, it also appears to be a place where a lot of patriots like to go to and talk about what they're going to do uh, in the future, usually planning, organized attacks, things of that nature. But then there's like other people who just want to go in there and just say the N-word and just basically just say whatever the hell they want. I don't really care. I think it's kind of sus if you have Parler. Like, <laughs> in my opinion, I feel like Parler is just a place where douchebags can go and be toxic in peace. That's that's how I see it. That's how I view it. So yeah, I don't really care. SK7 said, talk about the newest AOT episode trending. No, why would I talk about the newest episode of an anime that just came out? Oh, there's spoilers, obviously. I'm not going to come up on the show and talk about that. I hate people who spoil it. No, guys, just by the way, if you're watching this show and you ever watch me, you can just know for a fact that I will never spoil you guys in this kind of facet ever, okay? So no, we're not going to talk about it. This isn't the place. This is a spoiler-free zone. Uh, so Andrew Gama shared this. Apparently, there is an update on the... <laughs> so I was saying Shuisha uh, and the last video, okay? And it's not pronounced Shuisha. It's painfully aware to me now that it is not pronounced Shuisha. It's actually pronounced Shuisha. So sorry about that. Shuisha. Shuisha is what it's pronounced. So yeah. I'm just kidding. It's not Shuisha, okay? I think it's just Shuisha. <laughs> I was trying to trigger you guys. Sorry. 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 I did my best, okay? I forgot that the I and E makes the A sound like sensei. 
Shueisha. Anyway, as you guys can see, it says the full truth on Shueisha copyright hoax. The entire thing was apparently a hoax. Uh, I don't think it's been proven, but it's been claimed and it looks like it might have been, but there's this huge essay talking about it and I'm just, I'm so daggone tired of reading essays bro since when since when has this just become the thing where everyone just takes word documents so that we can just read i'm tired of reading i didn't come here to read i came here to lead no man no okay let me let me just jump to the conclusion first okay oh you know what let's go back to the introduction and then we'll go to the conclusion and we'll just see what is being said here. The first page reads the full truth on the Shoeisha copyright hoax. The following document aims to take an in-depth look into the recent situation regarding Shoeisha's Twitter copyright takedowns and masking the full truth beneath this complicated situation through extensive research and showing- uh, come on bro, okay, okay, just- just say it in a sentence. It doesn't have to be that long. Summary. On January 7, 2021, I woke up with my Twitter. This is a personal bio, bro? Being locked due to copyright claim. The account was easily unlockable, but the claim resulted in several images I uploaded being removed and a warning from Twitter that repeated infringements could get my account suspended. This claim was in the name of Shueisha, the publishing house of One Piece and many other series, citing the use of images from their original manga works as misuse of copyrighted material. Look, guys, I'm going to save you from the suffering, all right? I'm going to read this, and if I find anything that is interesting, I will read that out loud to you, okay? All right, because this guy definitely just likes the fluff. So he says here, the things that don't add up. Many have blamed this on a new copyright law that was passed in Japan at the start of this year, but that is not the case. The law indicates that things such as tweeting partial content from the series does not breach this law in any way. And he says something here about evidence. It basically says the phone number is fake, uh, the, you know, the number that's being tied to Shoyeisha, and it's tying it back to some specific individual. So guys, I've read through it. It's kind of wild. I'm not going to go through the whole details, but this conclusion TLDR is enough. It reads, in summary, there is enough evidence to sustain with little to no rumor doubt that not only is this copyright claim sent false, but the individual who sent these copyright claims is not an individual affiliated with Shuyesha. The claimant does not provide adequate contact information and what is provided is not accurately or legally representative of the company, which was very evidently attained by unofficial means in an action that proves the individual was not affiliated with the company they pretended to represent. That I really hate how this guy writes, okay? Uh, the claims that have made an incorrect error, nope, I'm just not gonna read it, okay? All evidence seems to point to an individual abusing the fragile copyright system of Twitter to harass and attack many individuals by posing as a company they do not represent. This has resulted not only in harassment, spread of fear, and threatening of many users' livelihoods and safety, but also in the defamation of the company they pretended to represent and hurting their public image. Furthermore, the evidence points to this individual being someone who harassed, attacked, and threatened several content creators in the past with a long criminal record of copyright right abuse. An attempt to attack one of them, they have gotten involved the entire Dragon Ball and One Piece fandom. Sadly, Twitter's copyright system is incredibly easy to abuse. I have attempted myself to make a false claim via this system without actually sending it, of course, just for testing, and it proved to be incredibly simple. I did not need to provide verification. I did not need to provide any accurate contact information. I simply had to just type whatever I felt like coming up with. Even making up false companies is good enough, and because the system is easily exploitable, the individual has been using it to harass several individuals across several communities. So surprise, it was a lie! <laughs> Shoutouts to all my Dang and Robin fans who got that reference. So yeah, apparently the Shu Yesha, the company, is not going around taking all the anime profile pictures and trying to fight the anime Twitter, which we all thought was happening. It seems to be from a hoax from some weird dude who was just basically trying to get back at a certain person. So yeah, case closed. It's like a terrible modern Scooby-Doo mystery detective case. <laughs> Take off the hat. <laughs> It's just some nerd who's just mad because he hasn't had enough sex. So Brawl said, update on the game Explained debacle. So those of you guys don't know who didn't watch my video yesterday, basically Game Explained, one of the biggest, you know, gaming YouTube channels of all time is basically under fire for basically underpaying their workers. One of the workers came out and said that he played Final Fantasy in like 48 hours. He only got paid like one to two dollars an hour. And then a lot of people have been talking about how they've been leaving Game Explained because of the poor work conditions. And all of it is being done by some dude named Andre, who is the founder founder of Game Explain. So yeah, a lot of people are coming out and complaining about Game Explain and they're losing a lot of subscribers for it. And yeah, there is a follow-up to that situation from yesterday. So we're going to go ahead and read through it. Okay, this one I'm very invested and interested in. So yeah, let's just get into it. So Maverick Hunter Ash, which is Ash, which is one of the people we mentioned, he said, Hi everyone, Derek has prepared a statement regarding the situation, but he doesn't have an error account, so I'm posting it on his behalf. I am also preparing my own statement, which I will post later. But for now, all I'll say is that I fully back everything Steve and now Derek have said about the situation. It's all true. If you guys don't know, by the way, all of these people 
our former ex-employees of Game Explain. That's right. Game Explain is not ran by just one person. <laughs> Game Explain is a company being ran by multiple people. It continues and says, that said, I would like to echo Derek and Steve's reminders that it has never been our intention to have Good Vibes Gaming compete with or undermine GX. The new crew of Joey, Tris, and Chris, as well as my good friend Tom, who remains at GX, deserve the same love and consideration you all have graciously shown us over the years, and we are not asking you to unsubscribe from GX or pull support from their Patreon. I'd also like to remind you that while we understand your desire for Andre to make a statement, we strongly ask that you don't harass him. We appreciate your sympathy and support, but we categorically do not want this to turn into a witch hunt. And now, Derek's statement. It's kind of sucks. Like, I feel like they're in a kind of tough position because, like, all of these guys have left because of poor conditions, but the people who are still in game explain in those poor conditions or in the conditions that there are, you know, like, they're still trying to make money. Like, they're still trying to work, and they're obviously their friends. So it's like, you want to, like, you know, bring out to light the truth of the founder and how the pay structure is, but you don't want to hurt the company enough that it hurts the people who work for it. It's like, it's the same situation with like companies like Cyberpunk where like the developers like are getting crunched and are working really, really hard to make a product, but the people at the top are kind of making some bad decisions. But if you punish the people at the top, sometimes it filters and punishes, it's just, it's a crappy situation, but let's just get into it. It reads, obviously I've never posted to Reset Era before this, but I wanted to get some things out there that I've bottled up for some time now. I also want to provide some more context if possible, but these are just some of my experiences. First of all, none of us knew how much each other was making. All I knew was that I was making the most of all employees as I had been there for the longest. Each year I would get a raise until I topped out at $5,000 a month in 2018. Despite asking for my yearly raise, Andre said that the channel couldn't afford it as by that point, John had been brought on. I didn't mind though, as having John on the team was a lifesaver, he was able to do updates and keep an eye on the channel, lightening my daily workload significantly. I felt expected to be on call at all times and would be nervous to even leave my house home most days, fearing that some random Nintendo news would just come out. This didn't really go away until John joined and Amy pushed me to take time for myself. Rarely did Andre handle an update and when it was just him, he would wait until either John or myself was free again to actually handle it. Before then, it always had to be done ASAP. As for Game Explains income, I was able to see the analytics for quite some time and the estimation is mostly on point, though there were some months where it would dip below that estimation, but the high end always felt massive and I hope that the rest of the team, especially John, was being compensated with that extra income. So your boy, <laughs> Andre at the top was getting paid buco dollars probably. I want to know exactly how much. I want to see that leak. Anyway, that said, I had to handle any work expenses myself for the most part, including consoles and equipment. The only part of my current setup provided by Andre is my mic. I paid for my flights to LA, to E3, or trains from New York to Nintendo events, while Andre would handle the cost of hotels if needed and meals if we were together. I never said anything as the expenses could be used as write-offs for my taxes and helped at the end of the year. However, this year felt different as the team started talking more. I discovered that John was making less than half of what I did despite doing the same amount of work. Steve's income had already been brought up and Ash had stepped back from the channel for only occasional work. He would send invoices that Andre would eventually get to, but Andre always had to be reminded to send our paychecks out. We tried to get a calendar started so he could be more consistent, but he resisted the idea. One other thing to know is that despite a discord where we all chatted and coordinated, Andre would often DM each of us to ask specific things. Ostensibly, it was so we could see them better, but often it felt like a way to strong arm for videos he wanted. There were many times when he wanted an update on something that I didn't feel was worth the time as I was working on other things, but he would push until I relented. Sometimes he gave up, but that was rare. It got to the point where I would ignore or put off looking at his DMs if I was busy with something else or be more combative over the updates he wanted to put out. Andre was extremely controlling, seemingly timing things to directly disrupt plans. He gave John tons of work when his YouTube channel took off, making it difficult for him to make videos there. He also asked me to stop streaming to YouTube as he didn't like old game playthroughs mixed in with our current event style. As a side note, any money I earned from Super Chat had to be totaled by me and invoiced at the end of the year as a bonus. What the heck? So leaving to Twitch served as a chance to earn more money immediately, especially with the baby on the way and Amy still unable to work on her own projects due to the effects of COVID. Jesus Christ, bro. These guys were down bad and they were getting destroyed by this dude. Jesus. I prepared people for the move for as well as I completed the final playthrough, but on the day of the final stream, Andre contacted me and asked that I stream to Game Explains Twitch instead. His reason was that he wouldn't be able to make me properly full-time if I streamed to my own Twitch, something he had been building toward through most of the year. That's BS. That's super BS, okay? <laughs> Guys, Andre, if this is the case, if this is true, Andre probably said this because he doesn't want him to become successful because if he became successful on his own, then <laughs> he would leave Game Explain. okay? This is a control tactic. This is definitely a control tactic. If I streamed my own Twitch, I would be considered a freelancer and immediately have my 
my pay removed with rates estimated at $15 to $20 per update and $100 and $150 per feature or review. He said I could have full control of the game explained Twitch though, so I felt strong armed into taking the deal. Oh my God, this is, oh wow. This was, uh, guys, this is not a good look. This is not a good look. Let me, let me keep reading. Hold on for a second. I still got the money from subs and bits monthly, but I had to go through him. It also felt like he dragged his feet to confirm affiliate status because he thought me streaming would somehow turn people away from the new game club tier on the Patreon. Around September, he asked me to join a voice call where he wanted to discuss me at Game Explain going forward. I popped in and at the point in time, he asked to be on camera. It turns out he had prepared a PowerPoint where he ran down several things. How COVID had affected ad rates and lower income, how he was still paying me the same despite this, how I was fighting him when updates had to be done, and ultimately how I was bringing in less money for the channel than what I was being paid. It ended with a question of whether I was still loyal and still wanted an official full-time position. This, okay, okay, okay. I'm getting some really, really strong bad guy vibes from this guy. It's like, Get some really, really strong bad guy vibes. Again, with a baby on the way, I was scared to the point of meekness because I felt I couldn't put Amy and the baby in that position. Oh my God, y'all. When Andre finally presented me with a full-time contract, I was in the middle of a nightmare moving situation where I could barely focus on anything. He pushed the fact that I had to make a decision as soon as possible due to timing, but I could not change my income situation without messing up my loan application. Ultimately, he gave me the time I needed and talked to the loan officers as my boss to help me get my loan. But in the interview, time, I was able to take a closer look at the contract. There was no defined set hours, no increase in pay, no overtime, no health coverage, not enough full-time employees, and overtime would only translate to extra time off, not extra pay. In addition, he wanted to approve where I appeared and when I streamed, taking away the one bit of control I had with the Twitch. It felt like I had no say in my life. Everything had to go through him if I wanted to earn money beyond Game Explain. But worst of all was an NDA included with the contract. Oh, bro, NDAs? NDAs, man. I, my last company tried to NDA me as well before I left as well, or the one prior to that. And they were, NDAs are basically like, look, you can't say nothing about everything that went down because I know we did you bad and we don't want you talking crap about us. That's that's how NDAs usually work. Tucked in the many points listed was a non-compete clause. Basically, if I signed the contract and left or was fired from Game Explained for any reason, I would not be able to work in the same space for a year. I took this to mean no YouTube, no games media, nothing. I talked to a lot of people around this time trying to figure out what to do. After speaking with all of them, including Amy, Ash, Steve, and John, I ultimately decided to leave with Ash and Steve coming with me so we could pursue Ash's idea of Good Vibes Gaming. So guys, if you're not catching up, if you're not caught up, okay, this is contract, like he just said, was a way to control him. It was a way to make sure that he was so afraid of leaving Game Explain that he would just basically be forced and have to stay. Otherwise, yeah, a non-compete agreement where you just basically can't do whatever the heck you want to do that's similar to what you're doing at Game Explain, that's basically asking to be unemployed for an entire year because his entire career is designed by doing the things he's doing at Game Explain. This is this is absolutely garbage and this is this is this is definitely some bad guy villain vibe. To finish, he said it felt better to leave and attempt my own thing rather than deal with the contract and the general stress and pressure of Game Explain. Money is tight, but I'm so much happier now. And I can only gratefully thank all of you who have supported Good Vibes Gaming so far, whether as part of our Patreon, watching my streams, or subscribing to the channel. That means the world to me that I can happily pursue my ideas and I look forward to sharing them with our fans. Ultimately, though, no matter what, I request that you don't harass any of the new hires, Tom or Andre. I merely want to provide more context and shed light on the position I was coming from. Thank you all for your support and take care. Fellas, I'm not going to lie. I'm absolutely disgusted, okay? If things that Derek is saying is true and I don't see that he has any reason to lie, like I don't sense any kind of dishonesty coming from his messages at all. But my guess is that in the background, Game Explained was absolutely terrible and this Andre guy was very controlling and very, very manipulative. And he's he's already made bank, okay? Like I said, there's like 1 billion views on the channel. I'm pretty sure he is a multi-millionaire. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. And after paying his employees what seems to be like pennies in comparison for the people who have been building and keeping the channel afloat, it just sucks to see it went like this. I understand that they don't want anything bad to happen to Good Explain because they have their friends over there, but I, I, I don't feel like a lot of people are going to be supporting Game Explain after all this. Um, this is just, again, information that I'm reading out. I'm not saying anything about Game Explain. I'm just reading the news, so you can't be coming at me, bro. <laughs> but it's not a good look for Game Explain. It's not a good look for Andre. All right, guys, so that's the end of the quickie. If you guys made it to the end of the video, do me a favor. As always, I always ask you guys to leave a like. It just lets
lets me know that I kept your attention throughout the entire video, okay? It's just an attendance check. So that'd be really cool if you just drop that like. And also do me another solid, just check to see that you're subscribed to me. A lot of people keep saying that they thought they were subscribed to me, but they weren't or they got unsubscribed. So if you could just do me a favor, again, just, just check, okay? <laughs> Cause uh, you know, it would just do a lot of support for me. And if you are subscribed, then just click the bell notification. Just we're trying to, we're trying to, we're trying to do good. So I appreciate the support. I thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next episode. You guys stay safe. You guys stay hydrated. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, by the way, if you want to get in on these. Okay. Cause I'm running out of good ideas. A lot of people are just trolling. So <laughs> I have to sift through a lot of trolls before I can actually find like some good questions. So yeah, I'll see you guys. I'm not going to ramble. I'm not going to go crazy. Uh, I'll see you guys later. You guys take it easy and uh, have a good one.